I noticed the time is we're a little early today. We're starting our vlog at 6 hours and 15 minutes into the day of November 5th, uh, 2020. That's a Thursday. Let's see here. Yeah. Number 5th. <laughs> My calculations were correct. Which means I have uh, some uh, checking of my uh, uh, of satellite data to do. Uh, but anyways, uh, where were we? <laughs> you can notice by when I start and when I end the videos uh, how the day has gone before and how it's going before. Either I'm going to start a little late or I'm starting a little early. But this time we're starting a little early. We're hitting we're more more towards the uh, four o'clock end and. Uh, uh, sometimes we're more towards the uh, noon end, starting at noon. <laughs> uh, as we were talking about before, we are talking about the anti-establishment uh, anti -establishment and, uh, and establishment. One of the problems that, that the, the so-called conspiracy theorists, they get things wrong because it's not that their information is incorrect, it's their conclusions. They take the assumption that everyone is always working together. And that everyone agrees absolutely with everything, that they're somehow functioning towards a script, but it's not that at all. It's a very loose conglomeration of various different groups and interests. Uh, and it's where the interests collide, where the interests are mutual, they're interested in the same thing, this is where sometimes they'll work together. And this actually works to the, in the some cases, can end up, end up causing more problems than, than, than others. Uh, the case now is with the with this whole issue in France, with the um, and, and, and in Germany and in Switzerland, with these latest uh, series of attacks by ISIS. Well, you have before then, and playing out prominently in the media, you have the Ayatollah of Iran warning France and Europe not to honor the cartoon character of Mohammed. Not to honor the uh, the not to honor the uh, the publisher, the cartoonist who was killed by ISIS, uh, saying that this is something that should be should be a crime. Now, uh, and all of a sudden you see these ISIS groups getting up there and, and, and attacking, and the immediate assumption in the the uh, uh, in the media, and this is what sort of what pops up into. Uh, individual's minds is that this is Iran's doing. But the thing is, if you know who ISIS is, if you understand the again the the nature of establishment, you understand that the Sunnis and the Shia are two fundamentally different Iranian groups. I mentioned before that even Jews, Jews are not monolithic. They are a variety of different groups. And so what happens is that there is a difference between the Jewish interest and the Israeli interest. But once again, uh, because of various different types of attacks and, and, and people not paying attention, there is no differentiation between the uh, Israeli interests and the Jewish interests. They're unified. But that's being done by a group who's interested in making sure that the Jewish identity is, is tied to the Israeli identity. Not that they are, that's, actually the, that's actually the case. But what happens is it, it, it's used, and even to certain... Uh, to the average Jew is to their detriment because at the end of the day, who's going to take the fallout for when when Israel does something wrong and, you know, injures innocent people? Well, when you're talking about revenge and these people believe in revenge, well, someone else is going to take revenge on you and as they take revenge, they're going to hit innocent people as well. And this continues the conflict. Again, if you want to break the cycle of violence, you want to break the cycle of war, talking about a person who's being uh, interested in peace, well, you got to find some way to break that cycle of balance. That means at some point in time, one side can't take revenge on the other. Just simply, well, I'm not playing this game anymore. We're not going to take revenge. We're going to take the higher road. But how do you get a person to that point? And a large, large chunk of the way is, and this is where inf information comes in, and this is where the difference between a white hat and a black hat is. Q LARP based on Donald Trump, and the answer is no. QLARP is not based on Donald Trump. It's based on GCHQ. It's a James Bond uh, character, and you're playing a live-action roleplay. You're playing a scenario. In this case, you're stuffing up your game because you're bringing it into reality. And as reality shifts, 
so does the game. In other words, instead of having rolling the dice, in most of these fantasy games, if you know about Dungeons and Dragons and all these called these weeb entertainments, which is also part of the nerd entertainment as well, um, there's a dice that controls things. There's a randomness that, that comes in with the dice, and the dice controls what you're going to do, and this simulates, simulates the sort of the reality of, of chaos in your life, uh, dictating what you're going to do next. Uh, but the thing is, is that there is no destiny here. This is, this is something uh, 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 far beyond that, and even there, rolling the dice does not, does not denote destiny. It's simply a random event. And so what happens is in here, instead of having a dice control the game, you're now having real life control the game. Control the game. And as real life shifts, as in politics and, and, and other beliefs and so on and so forth, so does the game. And so does your reaction to whatever is going on has to change. If you're going to be a white hat, then the interest is reducing the amount of violence in society. And the thing is, is that as an anti-establishment person, you know, I can understand where Antifa is coming from. I can tell where a lot of anarchists are coming from. But my choice is to be peaceful. It, 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 the, the, the Christian path that I'm on is an ancient Eastern Christian path. It's not related to the Western path at all. Uh, it's f fundamentally unknown to the Western path, uh, the Western Christianity. The Western Christianity is establishment. That's what, that's, the entire focus of Russian Christianity and the Judeo-Christian ethic is focused on establishment. The Eastern understanding isn't. It's based on the individual relationship that you have with Christ. And that's basically a peaceful one. In many cases, it's also anti-establishment because you're supposed to not be, be participating in the standard goings-on in life. Uh, you abstain from 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 the pleasures of life. This is also understood in Hinduism and to a certain degree in Buddhism when you want to tre achieve a transcendental state, a dharmic state you have to remove yourself from the physical environment. And so what happens is you remove yourself in, in, you know, in a sort of a, statement, a, a stage of humbleness and, and, and humility uh, and self-sacrificing because you give up your wants and even in some cases your needs for the benefit of others. And as you detach yourself from the physical environment, from your desires, you start becoming transcendental. And this is also understood in uh, Eastern Christianity. And what happens, Hinduism and Buddhism recognizes Christ as being the transcendental path. Or in many cases they say a transcendental path. But the thing is, what you'll see is in many cases that Christ is only the uh, is the transcendental path because on the tra that trans transcendental path of Christ, you become one with the Creator, you become one with God. On the other transcendental paths to the right, you don't become one with God; you simply become one with the creation, one with the universe, and there is no uh, further relationship with God other than that. And this this, this is. Again, going back to the anti-establishment argument, these things get a little complicated, so it gets long. Going back to the anti the establishment argument in terms of the whole thing with the um, the ISIS attacks, uh, the Sunnis believe themselves because they you can say Sunni is one school, Shia is the other. Shia is the Iranian school, Sunnis the uh, the Arabian school, the Arabs. Uh, Saudi Arabia are our allies. We understand this. In other words, Al Qaeda, uh, Taliban, ISIS, these are our allies. They're not our enemies. Who funds and trains these people? We do, as the Amer as the Western as the West as the Western speaks. So, in other words, who is doing the attacking on the United States? Well, the United States is. They understand what's going on. They're, what they're doing is they're creating the narrative. They're creating the narrative. They're creating the matrix. There are people outside the matrix creating this matrix. And the way they create the matrix is they use their own people. They just dress them up differently. They're the, they're, they are American people. They're Western people. They're European people. But they're dressed up as Arabs. Ooh, here comes the nasty Arab. Uh, he's going to attack you. He's a terrorist. 
without realizing the Arabs are our allies. And they always have been. The ones who have been our enemies are the Russians, the Chinese, uh, the English, in terms of the Western view. So the Western view comes from uh, from, Russia, from, from, from Germany. It's based on the Holy Roman Empire and expands from there. The center of this is not Israel or, or the Jewish uh, mafia or, or, you know, or anything like that. It's the Pope. The Pope is the center. So a large chunk of this is being run from the papacy. And what happens is that the Shia, from the Sunni perspective, once they're done cooperating together, the Sunni are going to go out and attack the Shia and bring them into the Sunni tent. They're going to try to make all of all of Islam one thing under the Sunnis, under Wahhab. This is what the this is what the conquest of Muhammad is about. Bringing his war was about bringing all the different beliefs of Islam under him. That God was that Christ was simply a prophet and not God himself. So what happens is that, that the Iranian uh, the Iranian uh, 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 Ayatollah didn't understand he was playing right into the Western media's under, uh, uh, sort of trap, saying, oh, look, here's the bad guy. And what they're doing now, because Donald Trump is, going, is, is more likely not going to be pushed out, and what's going to happen is we're going to return to the warfare that we had before. We're going to start, we're going to start seeing an increase in warfare in Iraq. We're going to start seeing an increase in warfare in Syria. We're going to probably, uh, with France, we'll see this in Lebanon as well. Uh, it looks like they might be going back into Egypt again. We're going to have a replay of the Ukrainian war. You'll start seeing more and more regime change under Biden than you did before under Trump, because Trump stopped it all. He shut everything down and brought, every, brought the soldiers home. You're going to see an increase again. So those of you who voted for Biden, you voted for more war. And that's what you're going to see over the next four years, is you're going to see more war. Well, it is five hours and 44 minutes into the day of Friday, November sixth, uh, two thousand twenty, and about a week about a week or so, um, the background to the right of me is going to change. Uh, I'm moving towards another upgrade again, and that's what you what you try to do is you try to see uh, month over month if you're improving, if you're able to do some degree of upgrade, and still maintain your budget. And so far, I've been able to do that. It is a little tricky because you don't know from uh, week to week how things are necessarily going in terms of uh, achieving the projects you want to achieve in terms of your budget. Uh, it really depends on the price you get it at, uh, when they come in, uh, different things like that. You do have to do your shopping. Sometimes uh, shopping for the best price and the best product uh, can take a day, day and a half, so... Um, and when at, and at the end, when you add everything, add everything up, uh, you need to make sure that uh, you're uh, under budget. Uh, the budget should be so that you're always finishing the month, uh, month over month, in the positive. But that's not always possible. Sometimes uh, you do get uh, a month or so where it's not as it's not as good as it could be. Uh, it makes, uh, if you're interested in sort of, uh, pushing ahead and using another project, you have to consider that maybe other projects that are on hold, and you're paying for a service that you're not using, uh, then you need to get rid of that service and just sort of think of, okay, well, when am I going to get that project back on track again? Like, I have a cell phone service up at, uh, my trailer in a village called Prophet Elias, and, uh, uh, it's a 4G service, but the thing is, I haven't been up there for, uh, almost two years now, and I don't see myself going up before April. Uh, and the thing is, the question is, do you keep paying the service fees, or 
uh, for the cell phone service or do you cancel and then renew it uh, uh, when you go up? So uh, that becomes the question as to uh, uh, sort of how you're going to sort of move forward and what your uh, options are. And you look at the you, you look at the number of different service that are services that are around you, the the, the quality of service, um, the various factors like that in terms of if the, let's say you have a service that's uh, a contract that's pretty good and gives you good prices, if you cancel that contract and oh well, you know a couple months later on down the road, that's like six months down the road, you'll renew the re renew the, uh, the your uh, your contract. Well, the problem is, um, are you going to get the same price? Is the price going to be higher? Do you get the same deal? Maybe it's a, it's a contract that's no longer available, uh, but uh, because you're on the contract and you're paying for it, they're honoring the you know the deal. So uh, these are the things you got to sort of you have to sort of con consider the, uh, moving forward. So the earliest I'd be move going up there would be April. Uh, that's when you in April. You go up for a couple of days in April, uh, just uh, after Easter, uh, and what you do is you have to do the fixing up for the summer. That's assuming you're going to go up, go up during the summer. But the thing is, you might not either. That summer might be just completely gone. It really depends. So we're talking like uh, April now. Is four months, four months away, uh, four months away from January. We are. We have all of November and December. So we're talking six months. Uh, six months of payments uh, on a service that uh, I'm not using. So uh, that sort of becomes the question as to what you do. Anyways, uh, I think that's about it for now. In terms of opening, oh no, we're not actually we're not opening the video. We're ending. We're ending the video. We are ending the ending the video. We will be opening the video uh, in about an hour or so.